I've been called a Paki most of my life. I'm pretty used to that. Things have been getting worse. People calling me a sand digger, still calling me a Paki, so that hasn't really stopped. A jihadi sympathizer telling me to back home from whatever Islamic hole that I crawled out of, which was Norway. Also, someone else called me an undercover jihadi. I think people are just saying it now. I think we're hearing about it more now. But I have to be honest, I think the feelings have been there for quite a while. Islamophobia on Twitter is on the rise. And sometimes that turns up offline too. When you start muttering Sharia law, this and that, Alibaba Park, oh. that's yeah. the issue. So if you've got something to say, then you can say it. There are these really significant increases in anti-Islamic activity now. Researchers at the think tank Demos have been looking at Islamophobia on Twitter for five months and have given us exclusive access to the data. We've been seeing 5,000 tweets every single day which are anti-Islamic, seriously derogatory and hateful, being sent in the English language across the world. Uh, and it's been building month on month since May, so July was the worst so far, with just under 7,000 tweets judged as anti-Islamic every single day. And all of that amounts over those five months to over 200,000 tweets in total. That was in the wake of terror attacks across France. The fear is how much an attack here could worsen the situation in the UK. East London Mosque. More than 7,000 people worship here every Friday. It's a massive landmark and a target for abuse. We've received a lot of hateful messages from this user account here called Islam, the evil truth. Um, and what's he saying? Or um, she? Muslims, you know, attack and kill people. Muslims lie. Muslims can't be friends with others who are non-Muslims. Quite, you know, graphic. Quite, quite graphic and gruesome like this one. That's someone being beheaded. Yeah, so that's a picture of someone beheading someone and someone's carrying a decapitated head. Sometimes it's really abusive content which, um, you know, kind of leaves a scar in your mind. Um, I've, you know, sometimes I look at it from the point of view of my um, baby son who's going to be growing up in this kind of environment and what kind of abuse is he likely to face as a result of his faith. Rakea Harris is 23. She's a student who lives locally and comes to the mosque. In between her studies, she's a published writer and she uses Twitter a lot. So this says, time to go, time to pack. It's time, guys, you've had a good run. You need to leave, you, you know, you've had enough time here. You are not integrated enough. Um, you're threatening our way of life. And do you get more messages like this when there's an incident like the Nice attack? Yeah, absolutely, always. Um, it doesn't really matter what I say or, or, you know, what I'm writing about or what I'm posting about. The responses after some kind of terrorist attack will always be slating Islam in some kind of way or insulting Islam or insulting me or insulting my hijab, even if I'm talking about something completely unrelated, even if I'm sending condolences to the victims. Quite a significant spike um, in the... The Demos research shows there are large peaks in Islamophobic tweets around terror attacks. 20,000 tweets a day during in the, the Nice in the, attacks. In the immediate wake of Nice, it's 20,000. In July, it's the most Islamophobic month recorded so far, this was significant. So each of these red dots is an anti-Islamic tweet coming from the UK. And that that we can see happening right now, that's a digital reaction to the Nice attacks. A massive red mass. That's right, angry, abusive, anti-Islamic, uh, all happening in the immediate aftermath of Nice. This is not surprising though, is it? That people are angry after a terrorist attack and are taking to Twitter to vent it. It's not surprising, no. I mean, people are angry in the wake of terrorist attacks, but that's what also makes terrorist attacks very dangerous. You know, the, these, the, the Islamophobic tweets that we're measuring here, these are not people that are being angry at the terrorists. It's not people that are being angry at Islamic State. It's people that are being angry at the wider Muslim world. It's people that are blaming Muslims for the terrorist attacks. These are the things which are Islamophobic, and, and surprising or not, they are damaging, whether they're happening on the street or if they're happening on social media. Obama is a damn raghead, explains a lot. Sorry to hear about France, these Muslims just don't quit. So what do we do about it? Well, it's very difficult. It's important to say, actually, only a thin, thin sliver of this is actually illegal. 
Only when there's an actual threat to life are people, are people actually breaking the law. All the rest of this is actually sub-criminality and therefore the people that are in the online space actually are far less protected than the offline space when it comes to receiving that kind of abuse. Do you think Muslims are doing enough to separate themselves from atrocities like what happened in Nice? Yes, I absolutely do think that Muslims are, are doing a lot to condemn these kind of attacks and disassociate themselves. I mean, community leaders are constantly coming out to condemn these kind of attacks. At Friday prayers, um, you know, the Imam will often condemn attacks that really have nothing to do with them. And it's come to the point now where I don't really think that me condemning these kind of attacks are going to change people's opinions. People While I'm interviewing Rakea, a man behind us starts yeah, interrupting. I ask him if he can keep his voice down. He replies saying it's free speech. And then he adds, there's no Sharia law here. It's freedom of expression. We've obviously chosen to sit here right now. So if you've got something to say, then you can say it. Do you want to talk about Sharia law? You want to talk about Sharia law to me? We can talk about, we'll talk about Sharia law. You obviously said it for a reason. I wasn't, I wasn't talking to you. Wasn't yeah, who, who are, are you talking, talking to? to? Who are you talking to about Sharia law here, sir? What We're your... losing our right to freedom of expression. And I think... Why is that? Because we are. We are. We've been, we've been told to be politically correct when we, we don't want to be politically correct. OK, listen, political correctness is one thing. I understand, I understand, I understand that you feel that you want to have a right to say certain things. I understand that, but we don't want Sharia law. Yeah, but we, you know, I'm telling you as a Muslim that that is not something. I'm telling you as a Muslim that isn't something that I want. The way I see Islam, again, I don't know too much about Islam, but to me, I see it as an ideology as opposed to a religion. I don't yeah. see it as a religion. I see it as a ideology. I know, but that is that is you, sir, and that is a result of Look, you know the things the things that you see happening around the world. I I understand when you see the things happening around the world, you think that it is an ideology. I'm not so well typing you. I don't wish for you to so well type me. So, in a strange twist. Our conversation about Islamophobia just got interrupted by some Islamophobia. What do you think of what you had to say? You know, it does make me a bit sad that it's this normalised now. Um, that it's almost like I cannot, you know, sit in a park with you and have a conversation without some kind of Islamophobe wanting to get a word in. Um, but as the conversation went on, as I engaged with him, you know, which I do think sometimes it is worth doing because you don't know where these people have formed their opinions from. And I think that people really struggle to differentiate between everything they read and, and see on the news and um, you know things that they see happening around the world how they kind of disassociate that with everyday Muslims that they see I don't actually want to say oh Islamophobes just bad just bad because I think the rest of us have a responsibility as well Muslim non-Muslim we're obviously not having the conversations that need to be had for people to feel safe enough that they can have real conversations and get beyond the name calling. Dear Khan is a documentary filmmaker who set up a magazine called Sisterhood to showcase female Muslim writers. Every time a terrorist attack happens, we don't need to get a bland press release from the mosque around the corner saying we condemn it. That's not the impression I get that what people want to see. I think what people don't know in the UK and in the West is that the first targets of extremists are other Muslims. Muslims have been dying and suffering at the hands of these barbaric groups for decades and nobody cared because the victims looked like me. Now people care because the victim looks like you. Many of us have faced, and many of our colleagues have faced, persecution, violence, imprisonments because they've taken on extremists. But that's not the story that you're often told. Dia says shutting down abuse is not the answer. Look, I don't like racist Islamophobes. I don't like sexist pigs. I don't like lots of people. But just shutting them down isn't going to resolve this. The feelings don't disappear. The fact of the matter is, the UK is never going to be white again. It's just not going to happen. People can wish it, but it's not realistic. Similarly, 
are parents who have left Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia, Muslim countries, for them to think that they can re-establish those countries and the lives that they had there over here, it's not going to happen. And I recognize the fact that that's a big loss for both people, for both sides. But the reality is that we have to move forward. The reality is that we're together going to have to find out what does it mean to be British moving forward? What does it mean to build a society that includes all of us, where it means looking like me and looking like you?